Welcome back friends, Kyle here. I hope you guys are doing so well today. Today we're gonna to be talking about coffee grinders. This one more specifically right here, the DF64. Now, depending on where you are in the world, it might go by a different name. Uh, but here in Canada, in North America, we call it the DF64. Now this, this is a coffee grinder for the home that boasts low retention and has really taken the home barista market forums Reddit by storm and rightfully so. So we're gonna talk all about my experience so far, how this grinder fits in the landscape of grinders and coffee in the world that we live in today. Uh, I also wanna compare it with a very popular competitor to this grinder, which would be uh, the Eureka Mignon Single Dose Oro, because this also boasts lower tension 65 millimeter flappers, a very similar design as you can see. So I wanna talk about my experience. We're gonna brew some coffee in just a second. We're gonna dive all into the DF64. Before we do, I just wanna say, hey, Thanks for, thanks for watching this video. If you haven't yet, just scroll down a little bit. Just click that little like button down below. Um, huge free way, free way to support this channel and it really makes a huge difference. Every, every single like counts. And if you haven't yet, click that red button that says subscribe. Love you all and let's dive into this. Oh, one last thing. The sponsor of today's video is Third Wave Water, which I'm excited to talk to you about them. Let's make some coffee. Now, I don't know if you know this, but Coffee is 98% water. And so the water that you use is one of the most crucial aspects of creating great coffee at home. You can get a great grinder, but I tell you, having good water will actually be a better result in your cup before a better grinder will. Now, third wave water steps in here because this is the perfect coffee mineral supplement to use rather than using like tap water or like bottled water. Now, how this works is you take one of these little packets, that are filled with minerals that are specifically for your coffee. This one here is for filter coffee. This one here for espresso that also protects your espresso machines. And they also have a dark roast profile. You take one of these, you add it to a demineralized water like distilled or ionized water, and you mix it up and you use that in your espresso machines or in your filter coffee. And honestly, it's game changing. If you wanna try this out, maybe you've never tried upgrading your water game, I've got you covered. Use the link down in the description below to get 15% off or use code KYLE15 at checkout at thirdwavewater.com. Third Wave Water is easily the best way to upgrade your coffee. This isn't overhyped. This is definitely recommended by so many professionals. If you wanna upgrade your coffee, you want better coffee at home, before you spend a ton of money on a coffee grinder, do yourself a favor and upgrade your water. <laughs> Okay, so you guys know normally I do blind taste tests and today we're not gonna do that. Now, there's a couple of reasons why. First off, I'm not always a huge fan of blind taste tests, so I'll probably do them again in the future. But to base a review off of one, one comparison, like the, the flavor profiles that I get, it's just not completely fair. There's so many variables in brewing one cup of coffee. Um, so I'm not gonna do that. Rather, this is gonna be a test based off of my weeks of experience with these grinders comparing them daily, pulling back-to-back -back shots. Both of these burrs are fairly seasoned, well-seasoned, and uh, I'm happy with the results, but let's drink these. The DF64. Mm. Gotta rinse my palate. I know there'll be comments. Yeah. Okay, so I need to give some context on this grinder. There are different burr options you can get in the DF64. The Mignon Single Dose Oro does not have that. Now, we're gonna get right into this in a second, but this is important for those who aren't aware. The DF64 has its item mill uh, flat burrs, the 64 millimeter flat burrs. Those are the burrs that are in this grinder right now, but I've also tested the SSP Red Speed burrs. So I have the multi-purpose unimodal burrs. I've tested that in this grinder too, and I'll share my thoughts on those and my experience with those uh, later in this video. Now, this burr set is their stock diamond inside 65 millimeter burrs. And the results from the item mills, the stock burrs in the DF64, which is their more budget friendly option, which most people are gonna go for, uh, versus the Oro single dose, the coffee's both very good, okay? We've got two great 64, 65 millimeter flat burrs. Flat burrs are great at making great coffee with good clarity, some great sweetness. Now, the DF64. For me, this is a more unimodal style burr. What does that word mean? Well, when coffee's ground, you know, there's different size particles. It's not all one size. And when the coffee is broken down and cut up by that burr, there's a more uh, uniform size of that grind distribution. If you were to chart this out, like I'll put right here somewhere on the screen, the distribution of those grounds will have a tighter distribution. There'll be more uh, alike than different. Where something like the Mignon, in my experience, this one has a wider distribution of grounds 
And that's not a bad thing. Some people think that you want the more uniform. That's not always the case. But this one has a wider range. So you're getting some more sweetness in the cup. You're getting a little bit more complexity. Where this one, you're getting a lot of clarity uh, with some sweetness. But it's, it's a little more linear. Where this one feels a little bit more textured. Depending on your, your palette and what your preference is, uh, one might be better than the other. But both... Both are pretty good. So let's talk about some things that you'd want to know if you're buying the DF64 compared to the Oro. Build quality, experiences, realities, modifications, those SSP burrs, and ultimately which grinder of these two you should buy. So the DF64, it's a Chinese make grinder. Its price is very affordable for what it's offering. Depending on where you are in the world, these start around $400 with those stock burrs. And you can get those with the SSP burrs, but it normally adds a few hundred dollars. It's pretty fantastic for what you're getting here. This is a fully metal build. Uh, you can get them in a bunch of different colors. This one here is the white. Uh, the colors themselves are actually a wrap. This isn't actually white metal. It's not painted. It feels great. I have no issues with that because any issues with scratches, I can just replace this wrap down the road or change the color if I decide to change my appearance of my coffee bar. You know, the other pieces are all metal. Everything feels good. Everything feels solid. The grind adjustment feels very nice to use. It's got a very good tension, similar to like the Niche Zero. Um, some criticism though, we, we do have a plastic dosing cup and you know, much prefer that Niche Zero or even uh, the metal one on this grinder as well. Uh, and then this bellows here, this deceivingly is, is metal. The bellows, you know, it's a bellows. And bellows really, I've yet to feel a very premium feeling experience bellows. Maybe it's out there, um, but it's just, yeah, it's a bellows, it's squishy. It is what it is. If you move down, we have the power button underneath the dosing cup. Awkward placement for sure, but I do enjoy how it's lit up. I can tell that this grinder is plugged in. There's power to its source. It isn't a bad feeling experience. It's just an awkward one. But honestly, I think a lot of people criticize this button. I think it's okay. It's fine. They should probably change that in the future. But for now, it's not a reason not to buy this grinder in my opinion. Quite honestly, it's heavy. It feels good. Everything about it feels pretty premium. And even the motor, it sounds pretty good too. And in my review of this grinder, I really didn't love the experience of the motor. You know, it's shaky, it's loud. Overall, I think the build quality is good. For the money, it's very hard to beat the DF64 for the size of this grinder, the power of this grinder and what it offers. But what about workflow? Now this is really important. And I think workflow is an underrated asset to a coffee grinder. I think using a coffee grinder every day should be an enjoyable experience. You shouldn't have to think too much about it. It should be able just to be used without having too much fuss. And over the years, flat burr grinders have been known to have a little bit more fuss than like their conical counterparts. For example, the Niche Zero is a great example of a grinder. While not perfect and it has lots of flaws, uh, it's easy to use. You turn it on, it's easy to dial in, it brews good coffee, and and that's it. And then flatbird grinders, they have their own issues too. And, and I think both of these are trying to address some of those. And that's why you'd be looking at these. For the DF64 and the Mignol, they, they're trying to address that retention issue. A lot of flatbird grinders have retention issues. They get coffee grounds stuck in the ground chamber, ground shoots, etc. That's why both of these have a little bellow system to pump air through the grind chamber to force grounds into that dosing cup. Uh, they can be a lot more expensive and uh, just a little bit more nitpicky, often a lot of static issues, just the way that coffee is ground. Now, one of the things with the DF64 dial, while nice to use, it can be hard to see what adjustment you're at, what number you're at specifically. Now we'll talk about some fixes to that, but out of the box, it can be really frustrating not knowing exactly if you're at 33 or 35 or 42, right? There, there's a definitely a, an adjustment reality there. You've got to get used to looking down at this little uh, circle with a line through the middle to see what you're at. The Mignol Oro doesn't have that issue when it comes to seeing where you're at on the grinds. Easy to see, but this does have a dial that needs multiple rotations to go from filter to espresso. Speaking of that, how do these guys do, how does the DF64 specifically do for filter and espresso? In my experience with those stock item mills, fantastic. You know, they do need to be seasoned and I had the stainless steel versions that were uncoated. For me, it took about 10, 15 pounds of coffee to really break those burrs in. A lot of you ask what seasoning is, really essentially all it is is breaking down any imperfections in the burr by running coffee through the grinder. Just wears down those burrs and gets them to the 
place where they need to be for the longevity and consistency in those brews. Now, the item mills do a great job, like I mentioned, for espresso. The espresso is clean, a lot of transparency. No, it's not the best espresso I've ever had. No, they're not as good as the SSP burrs, but out of the box for most people, it's an enjoyable experience, and most people won't need to upgrade to those SSPs. Now for filtered coffee, the same is true. The coffee is clean. It's very sweet. I found really good cups of coffee out of those item mills. I was honestly really surprised for the prices grinder with those burrs. Now that being said, I did align my burrs out of the box. This was pretty aligned, but it was not perfect. Now, if you're unsure of how to align a grinder, I've actually linked a link to Lance Hedrick's video to aligning grinders down below, a dear friend of mine, and he does an amazing job of explaining how to align flapper grinders. But that's also true of the manual single dose. I had to align this one as well. So that's not something that you find just on cheaper end grinders. It's just something that's more common in flapper grinders until you get up to a higher price range. But if you want more information on aligning grinders, uh, go check out that video and I'm gonna talk about it in a future video. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that one. Beyond the grind adjustment, this bellows does work pretty well. Now this does have a declumper built in. This one is the version two. It's an updated version from past declumpers. I know James Hoffman's reviewed this grinder in the past. They've updated it since then to help, but it's still not perfect. Now I was really hoping in reviewing this, I would say this is the perfect flapper grinder. I know there's no issues, just use it out of the box. It just isn't the case. You do need to adjust that declumper um, or just understand that if you're changing coffees, you're changing grind settings, you're gonna have to run some coffee through to ensure any coffee retention stuck in that declumper is pushed through. Now, in my experience, I've also removed that declumper and that helps a lot with retention, okay? If you're open to modding your grinder, I will be covering this in the future on how to remove the declumper as well as some other modifications on the DF64, but it is an experience. You do have to find out how to take this grinder apart and remove that. Is it necessary for most people? No, but for those who make want to make sure that they have like zero retention, then absolutely yes, you do need to remove that declumper or adjust it to some other models that are on the internet. Some people put the Mythos 1 grind clumper in there and that helps break down the clumps and keep the retention as low as possible. That being said, the retention on this grinder is very good. I, I had very good experiences in taking this grinder apart, which is very easy to do with the twist of this dial, you can literally pull off the burrs without any tools. Um, the retention's fantastic. My experience on the Mignol single dose wasn't as good. Now this also had some declumper issues, which I've talked in the full review, but even without the declumper, I found there were still grounds getting caught in some areas of the grind chamber. I was still classified as a low retention grinder. And in my review, I did say without the declumper, it was much better. But I do say the DF64 is better at being a low retention grinder than the Mignol single dose. The bellow system as well on the DF64 works really well. Where I said the Mignol single doses bellows really didn't push the grounds through because of declumper issues, but also because air was leaked through different areas of the bellows. Where this one here has a lot of suction and honestly sometimes, depending on what grind setting I'm grinding at, once I push those bellows, you can get like a gram of coffee pushed through. It works really well. And honestly, I would recommend using it for most people. If we work down here, this grinder does have an issue with static as so many flatbird grinders do. If you remove that declumper, you're gonna have even more issues, so be aware of that. Regardless, I always use RDT with the DF64 to help just keep those clumps uh, stuck together, a little less static, and uh, just help reduce the mess. Okay, I could go on and on and on about the DF64. There are so many videos on the internet covering it, so what you really wanna know is, is how does it compare, right? How does it compare to this grinder here? Should you consider this grinder in the market today? So here's my answer to that. First off, compared to the Oro, the Oro, it's a beautiful grinder. Eureka really tried to tackle not only the DF64, but the Niche Zero in this. And like I mentioned already, I am working on an ultimate comparison for the best single dosing grinder, including some of these grinders behind me. And so again, subscribe so you don't miss that. And I'm gonna include these two. But what I do wanna say is that the DF64 for me, it doesn't feel like a downgrade from the Oro. This really was supposed to be the premium version to fix the DF64 issues things like static, things like that gr grind clumper, things like it's it's just a small, weird, um, quirky imperfections. Just doesn't really fix it, it just has its own, right? This still is messy, this still has retention issues, it's loud, it vibrates. Uh, for me, the, the workflow is actually much better on the DF64 than the Oro single dose. Does that mean you should only go for the DF64? Well, no, by the time you're watching this video, they might have fixed some of the issues on the Mignol single dose. This is the first version. Uh, this grinder's only been out for a couple months. But guys, like at the end of the day, like you want the best value possible. And this grinder, you know, here's the prices on the screen here. 
this grinder, depending on where you're in the world, is is almost double the price. And for me, I just don't see where that money's going other than this is an Italian-made grinder versus a Chinese-made grinder. And and like it doesn't feel it doesn't feel that much cheaper. So what about like the modifications of the grinder? Like I said, the cup profiles on these two, they're similar, but this one obviously has some more texture. Um, this one has a little less clarity than the DF64. But let's talk about those SSP burrs because that's a big conversation within the DF64. Really, the SSPs in the DF64 turn this four or $500 grinder into a grinder way out of its price range in terms of cup quality. Now, a lot of those workflow issues do not change with just SSPs, but the cup profiles are fantastic. Using the unimodal multi-purpose SSP red speed burst, this, the clarity on this is just unreal. You know, there's definitely a great filter coffee grinder in this with those burrs. And the espresso, while not for everybody, it's got a lot of clarity. Now I will say you do lose a little bit of range with those multi-purpose burrs, at least in my experience. Now, depending on your coffee, it can sometimes be hard to uh, pull a shot. It, Unimodal burrs are, they're a multi-purpose burr. You can do espresso. Some people prefer them for espresso. Some people might want to go with the high uniformity SSP burrs, and, and I'll link both of those down below so you can check those out. The high uniformity would be more similar to like this kind of burr style, where it produces a little more fines, some more boulders, less of a tight distribution in their grounds. And so uh, it'll produce some more texture. You know, the, the multi-purpose burrs, they're, they're not very textured. You do lose some of that texture in exchange for clarity. And some people really like that thick, gooey espresso. Those SSP burrs, at least the multi-purpose ones, won't do that. Also with those SSP burrs, uh, you do lose that zero point. Um, when I installed my SSP burrs, my zero point went from zero or just past zero to 30. There's a couple ways you can fix that. One of those is replacing the sticker and so that putting the, z the sticker where the zero would actually be on your new zero point, which is 30 on mine, or 3D printing a dial indicator that would sit on the collar here that would actually point kind of like a clock to um, where your zero point would be. Speaking of 3D printing, that's where a lot of the modifications come in for the DF64. Now, what I've been learning is there's a whole world that I've been completely unaware of in 3D printing. And there's communities out there on Thingiverse who are just sharing open source uh, 3D printing materials for the DF64. Things like issues to fix its dosing cup, bring it closer to the chute, um, making dosing funnels so that the grounds don't get spewed everywhere on your counter. Another modification that actually fixes the popcorning that puts a cone inside um, this section here, which it makes it so that it's harder for the, the grounds to pop back up and fixes those popcorning issues. And then some people have even modded and 3D printed the declumpers, which I don't know if I'd necessarily recommend. Um, depending on the plastic that you're using, it's not always food safe, but that's, that's a whole nother conversation that we're not gonna get into today. So to summarize, to wrap this up, the DF64, it's not perfect. This is the kind of grinder that if you want to modify your grinder or if you're the person who wants the best value, the best value for the lowest price possible, good results in the cup, this is kind of it. You know, it's a grinder that can do espresso and filter coffee, swap between the both. It's fairly low retention, especially if you're willing to do some modifications. Uh, it's fairly quiet unless you change that burr set to that, that SSP burr. Uh, it's easy to use. The build quality is fairly good. Overall, I'm very impressed with the DF64. And for me, this should have been this, but better, and it's not. And if you've made it this far in the video, again, you are my favorite. I really appreciate you watching this video, but let me know in the comments down below by writing flat burr frenzy. Flat burr frenzy, that'll let me know, hey, Kyle, I actually watch your videos. I'm not, you're not just talking to nobody. I would appreciate that. Again, like this video if you learned anything or enjoyed this and uh, be sure to subscribe for more videos, including more videos on the DF64 uh, in the very near future. And um, I might do a live stream and modifying this grinder talking all about that. Also, if you're interested, I will leave a link to my Patreon down below. Uh, every single month, uh, I give away coffee, coffee gear, anything I'm not really using anymore after reviewing. And they give me a budget to be able to make videos like this. So if you're interested, you can sign up for as low as, I think it's a dollar 50 a month. You can join our Discord and have access to all of those giveaways and be a part of this community. I love you guys all so much. Have a wonderful day and we will see you guys all in the next video. Peace.